I watched 309 games of flats in season nine, and I learned some things along the way. We're gonna go over what the best size of stack you can run is, is five stacking and GM ruining the game, who flats should and shouldn't play with based on win rate, how the new ranking system works, examples of selective memory and how it impacts gameplay, and the mindset that you need to rank up. Now, before we get started, 309 games is a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty small sample size. So take my data with a grain of salt. Flats has played over 12,000 games of competitive since Overwatch 1, so looking at 3% of his total games doesn't really give the full picture, but it can give part of it. He's also played 400 games a season at the time of writing, so this data can always be updated. Also, I encourage others to get data from their own gameplay so you can see what's best for you because it can change wildly from person to person. This is why I don't really like the questions, how many people should I play with? And what heroes should I play, especially when asking streamers? Because it really depends person to person. Although you can try to answer these questions with data for a good generalization of what is best for the average player. Now, the whole reason I started tracking data on flats is because of one quote that I heard on a live stream. I win 70% of my solo queue games. Yeah, solo is the play. Solo this season, I think I have like a 70% win rate, but I've just been like hard stacking with friends the entire time because it's fun. I love data and stat tracking, so I wanted to see if this was true. I went back into his VODs and started recording wins, losses, and who he played with. Flats goes on to say, I played like 30 solo games this season and won 20 at this point. And when I look back, he had in fact played around 30 games solo, but in those games, he was 9 and 19. Actually, no, I've won more than, I've soloed more than 9. I've soloed like... 30 probably realistically and i think i've won like 20 of them i believe flats along with a lot of other gamers use selective memory or selective omission to praise himself for wins and blame others for their losses i have other examples of this coming up basically flats remembers the solo wins vividly and forgets the losses because he wants to move on from them when playing solo thus leading to him overestimating his win rate as a solo player since when you're playing as a solo, the only common element in all of your games is yourself. You'd like to think that you would have a positive win rate, because there's nobody really else to blame. However, when he stacks, he remembers the losses a lot more, and it has a great impact on his morale, which we'll see later on. Since he is stacking in these games, and there are other common factors in all of his games, the other streamers, he is more likely to blame his friends for these losses than reflect on the games to see how he can improve and what he could have done differently. Here he goes on to say, every time this happens, we play games with a bunch of people, we lose a bunch of them, and I have to go solo queue to gain it all back. <sighs> every time this happens, we play a bunch of games with people, we lose a bunch of them, eventually go back solo queue, win back all of our fucking lost elo, and then group again and lose it all over again. And it just happens all the time. While in this current stack, he was 12 and 12. They were losing more towards the end, but he's forgetting about the wins that he had earlier. Wins as a stack might not stick out in his memory as well because he is stacking. Again, this means that since he is not the only common factor in each game, he's not able to praise himself solely for his wins. He has to give some credit to the others in his stack. So stacking dampens effective wins exaggerates the blaming of the losses. At this point, his total stacking win rate was 54% and his solo win rate is 40, but he thinks it's the other way around. So statistically, he cannot really blame him losing rank on stacking and say he has to gain it all back when he is losing more often than when he does play solo. Normally this isn't an issue, but if he's telling other people that he has a 70% win rate when he's playing solo and they should go play solo if they want to climb, he is affecting others more than just himself, because those players may not know that stacking might be the way for them. When trying to improve, and I know Flats has said this himself, you need to focus on yourself first and cannot just blame others for your losses. In fact, you shouldn't even stress out about a singular lost game. You have to look at your games in totality to get a trend of improvement. You need to come out of every game with the mindset of what did I do well, what can I improve, and have I gotten better, instead of did I win or lose. Because the first set of questions is in your control and the second is not. This is the same mentality that I had when I swam in high school or played rugby in college. I focused on racing against myself rather than everybody else around me. I could not control the time that they got in my race, only my own. 
which also meant I could not control the placement in the race pretty much at all. I can't control how prepared the other people I swam against were, only my own preparation. So I could go out and swim a 58 second 100 free and get 8th place, or I could swim a 59 second and get 4th place, just based on who my opponents were. I should be happier with the 58 second 8th place, because it means I got better. Taking that into Overwatch, I should focus solely on how prepared I was for that game, not the performance of my teammates or my opponents. If you get better, the wins will come in time, simple as that. You may get better after a VOD review, but end up going 5 and 10 that day, just because you ended up with teammates that weren't as prepared, or opponents that were more prepared. This is, again, out of your control. As long as you actually improved, then on average, you will win more in the future. Flats is showing that he doesn't practice what he preaches here with that mentality, putting the losses on his friends or random teammates, rather than focusing on improving and not worrying about the wins and losses as it will come with time. For example, he said, Thanks for the raid, Wanted. GG's for playing. Every day I stack, I lose all my elo. We gotta fix that one of these days. Yo, Wanted, thank you for the big raid. I appreciate it, dude. Brown, thank you, buddy. I appreciate appreciate it. Push your Hope you have a good stream. Welcome in. Hello, hello. GG's. Thank you for Think playing. Every every night after we've gotten off, I gotta win yeah, back all my ELO. <laughs> and then every day we stack and lose it all. Five, we gotta fix that one of these days. Three, two, one. Yo, yo, yo! Do this. He was 8 and 9 with Wanted in the stack this day, which isn't horrible. And it was 13 to 9 total when playing with him so far this season. And again, he shouldn't be worrying about the wins and the losses anyway. He says he doesn't care about them. He is in essence blaming Wanted because every time they play, they lose. But thinks that when he's solo, he's constantly winning, which again just isn't the case. He dwells on the losses too much and forgets about the wins quickly. We shouldn't be thinking about either in the first place. Again, he goes on to say, Tank's almost GM2. It's like it's not. It, it's every, every night I solo yeah. queue and I climb up and then I during the day stack and lose <laughs> lose it all. I I take first of all we are 17 and 12 if we win this game on the day. If anything, this has been amazing. Are we up today? Yeah, we are. Stick together. Let me. The last few games were definitely back up, but like for a while there we were in the dumps. I think the worst we made it to was 50-50. The traitor swords, so sharp. So I think me and Karki might have been down a couple at the beginning. But I made them yeah, well, I mean, That's what probably Karki made it worse. Asleep by the time I got on. Yeah, uh, Karki. Kar Karki was half asleep at the wheel. Yeah. He was only 4-4 four and four with Karki, so he didn't lose at all. It was 16-12 and 12 with the rest of the stack at this point. Flats even directly blames Emong for some of the losses later on. Emong is primarily a tank player, which is all Flats plays, so he selflessly Get it? <laughs> Flexes on to DPS. Emong, however, is no slouch on DPS. I'm sure he'd tell you he's better at tank, but going back to his esport days, Emong was listed as a flex player for selfless, not a pure tank. He would regularly flex onto DPS for his team, playing heroes like Soldier and Tracer. Flats goes on to say, Are we close to champ? No. Uh, let's just say stacking has not gone well. But today's going well. Today's been solo duo day. Except at the beginning. The beginning of stream, I, I played with Emong on DPS. Uh, and uh, games let, went less than Stellar. Uh, but solo slash duo with Karku since then has been, has been pretty good. Yeah, solo is the play. If you stack, you, your games are a bajillion times harder. I uh, Solo this season, I think I have like a 70% win rate. But I've just been like hard stacking with friends the entire time because it's fun. I'd rather have fun with friends early season, just have a good time, and just worry about rank later. Like, who gives, who gives a shit? We're not fucking pros. If stacking is more fun, you shouldn't be constantly worried about the wins and the losses. Even though he generally wins when he stacks and loses more when he plays solo. He had the same record, 1 and 2, with Emong as he did solo right after. But he says that his solo games were much better. Duo has gone well for him so far this season, I will give him that but Solo is by far his worst win rate at 39% when he made this comment. He also has a positive win rate with both 4 and 5 stacks, so he can't say that stacking doesn't go well for him. He also doesn't give Emong much of a chance here with such a small sample size of only 3 games. 
And as we all know, anything can happen in three games of Overwatch. Overall, he's also 21 and 17 when playing with Emon after the 300 plus games I've gone over, which is better win rate at 55.3% than his solo win rate of 44.8, and only slightly worse than his total duo win rate of 56.5. I also don't get how you can say that you don't care about the wins and the losses, when you obviously do. You can see his morale get worse when he's on a losing streak, especially in a stack. He constantly talks about his win rates, says they can't climb with friends, and when he does solo queue, he complains about his team after most of the losses. If you have a stoic mindset, only worrying about what is in your control, you wouldn't need to complain about these things, and you truly wouldn't care about an individual win or a loss. But again, what he says and how he acts are completely different. I swear, half the DPS players have not learned how to play in this meta yet. They just sit there and they go for backline and they lose. And it's like, guys, turn around and kill the Winston every fight, and you'll win. This guy was struggling a little bit. He's a Life Reaper player. Unfortunate. Tough with that one. We needed to swap our comp, but I think we had a Brig one trick or a Genji one trick. I'm not sure. But we didn't swap, so we just kind of get fucked. America dude, GG's, holy fuck! How can I not win any fucking games when I play like an absolute monster in all of them? Holy fuck, dude! They had arguably close to meta, if not meta. We unfortunately had mercy. It's okay though. It happens. I don't know, fucking died again, dude. How do you go two and six? Oh. I'm getting back in. We really lost that game. That's crazy. Hooked and dead every fight. Literally, someone got hooked and died literally at the start of every single fight before we even walked in. They made a lot of great swaps, so our team did not. Stop. You know, just one of those. Just one of those. Yeah. Just one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our our yeah. fucking like Sojourn is legitimately stupid. Keep chasing me. Yeah, like let me keep jumping high ground, sliding into their team, one v fucking three into a ball tracer comp. What do you have a Briggs end backline? Yeah, that's smart. Let me just do that over and over. Follow my lead. I'll make sure this goes smoothly. I, I can't even tell if they're trolling. They might actually be just trying to troll. Five, four, yeah, three, they're both out of voice. They're a duo. Now I want to go over Flat's response to the question, what is the best stack size? Which I heard him get through donations multiple times on his stream, and what he actually had most success with so far this season. Flats has gotten asked this question a lot, and he responds with quotes like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, games are a lot harder when you fully stack than when you just play by yourself, unless you're playing like pro player stacks. But I do like playing with people. It's fun. You don't get to do it very often, you know? Just play me in the soldiers in the flank. Why are you hurting Jay so much? Dude, this game does not like when you stack. If you stack. You get harder games. Anything past a duo gets pretty difficult. Which is why whenever I play with like me, Wanted, Emong, Stat Craggy, whoever, we get like the hardest fucking games. Then we play solo duo and like can't lose. Select your hero. <sighs> Mostly because it's like super fa far matchmaking is what I think. So duo is probably not as bad, right? I yeah, solo Q duo is just the same as it used to be. Gotcha, Although I will say games feel easier solo than they do duo, but you know, it's what it is. It's true. GG's. GG's. Okay. Oh. GG's oh, was fun. That's it. Yeah, good luck with your games. You get off. I'm gonna get off. Okay. Okay, definitely good luck with your games, Flat. Yeah. Oh, man, I mean, I win like 70% of my games solo, so you know what? That's fine. You know, it's no big deal. I think it's the opposite. <laughs> oh, 
All right, see you later. Rolled. Oh my god. Dummy, no. dummy, right? GG's. GG's. He says, uh, you know, games are hard when we five stack. When we solo or duo, we can't lose. And games feel easier solo than when they duo. When in actuality, he has a 53% win rate in five stacks, 53% win rate in four stacks, surprising 46% win rate in three stacks, a 56% win rate in two stacks, and a 45% win rate solo at this point. We can draw a couple of conclusions from this data. First, Flath should focus on duoing if he wants to climb the fastest, just based on his past results. And he should recommend others to do the same if they ask him what's best based on his own personal experience. But instead, he suggests solo queue even though that's not backed up by his own results. He should also avoid solo queue himself, which is his worst win rate by size, and is responsible for the most lost rank out of any person he's played with this season with seven more losses than his wins. This also helps answer the question, should five stacking be allowed in GM? I think it should. Yes, his win rate is better in a stack, so if you're trying to climb, I personally would recommend it, but it's not so high that it's oppressive. If you're having top 100 to 500 players five stack, there's a good chance that the matchmaking system can find a game of players with similar skill. The issue does come into place, however, when people are smurfing in the stack to boost the win rates of just a few players, or if it's all top 10 players that are in a five stack. But they should be champion at this point, and I believe you can only do them when you're in there. This can be especially annoying with the rank reset, as I've run into five stacks with these top 10 players personally, when I have five solo players out of voice in a support that peaked GM5 after being hardstuck masters for seven seasons. Thank calling a reversal when we, <laughs> when we lose. However, as mentioned before, as long as I am improving, I should still climb, so I'm not too stressed out about these outlier games I should trust the process and keep climbing, and I think the benefits of allowing 5 stacks is a lot greater than the negatives. These games will also become less common as these stacks get higher in rank after the reset, and thus they'll eventually be placed against teams at their skill level for a more ex fair experience for all. The last two things I want to go over are data on who's doing the best when playing with flats, and misconceptions about how the new ranking system works. As he was getting questions about the system, it wasn't really providing the best answers in my opinion. First, the data on other players. This data isn't going to be really useful for anybody other than flats. I just found it interesting because I like this sort of thing. I can sort the data two ways. First by win rate and the second by wins minus losses to get an estimate of the total rank won or lost by playing with these people. Since a high or low win rate doesn't always tell the full story. So I'm going to have a 75% win rate by going three and one. That's such a small sample size that a player that went 70 and 30 might be a better choice to play with, even though their win rate is 5% lower. When looking at win rates, we have Melio and Megatron tied for first with 83% win rate, Cry in third with 67%, Somnus and Codebreaker tied for fourth with 60%, Wanted, J3, and Aspen tied for sixth with 56% win rate, Emong and SK in ninth with a 59% win rate, eleventh is Flat's total stack average with a 52% win rate, Karku is in 12th with a 52% win rate. Warren is in 13th with a 50% win rate. Craig is in 14th with a 48% win rate. Siegel is in 15th with a 47% win rate. Flats playing solo is 16th with a 45% win rate. Deco, Ruben, and Metro tied for 17th with a 43% win rate. Aramori is in 20th with a 38% win rate. And finally, Snowell is in 21st with a 36% win rate. Looking at wins minus losses, we have Flats at any stack in first with 12 more wins than losses. SK and Karku are tied for second with five more wins. Melio, Meg, and Emong tied for fourth with four more wins than losses. Wanted, J3, and Aspen in seventh, three more wins. Cry, Somnus, and Codebreaker with two more wins. Ward is in 13th going even. Seagull and Metro are in 14th with one more loss than win. Craigie, Deco, Aramori, are in 15th with two more losses. Snow is in 19th with three more. Ruben is in 20th with five more losses. And last place is Flat Solo Q, which as mentioned before, with seven more losses and wins. So looking at this data, I think a team of Flats, Melio, Cry, Karku, and SK could work really well together. The last thing I want to go over is the new ranking system, as there are some misconceptions thrown around by Flats due to the lack of understanding on it. He seems to think that if you lose one game, you have to win two to get it back for some reason. If this were true, and say you gain 15% for a win and lose 30% for a loss, Flats would have lost 5,790% of 
of rank from his losses and gained 3,180% for his wins, totaling in 2,610% loss going from placing Masters 1 all the way to Browns 5, which obviously has not happened. There's one game and you literally have to win two to get it back. It's actually awful. actually insane i can't believe it dude oh <sighs> it's okay finally fucking broke it holy shit i think we lost what four in a row and probably have to win like eight in a row to win those all back Oh my god, it's gonna be more. It's gonna be literally like eight games we have to lose or win. Holy fuck. The reason he thinks he's losing so much and gaining so little is because of the system they put into place that they didn't really talk much about. In the old SR system, you could go up and down rank barriers every single game. So if you were constantly winning and losing at the edge of Masters and GM, you'd be Masters one game and then GM the next, and then back to Masters the game after that. In the new system, they keep track of your percentage in each rank the exact same way, but your displayed rank won't go down after just one game. So for example, if you're 5% into Masters 1 and lose 20%, you'd be at 85% of the way through Masters 2. However, the game wants to give you another chance to keep you at your rank. So you'll be displayed as only losing that 5% of rank and now at 0% of Masters 1, when in actuality, you are lower. If you win the next game, you only gain that little bit back around 5%, which makes sense. If you're at 5%, then lose and win, you should be roughly right back where you started. If you lose, however, you move down to 65% of Masters 2, since technically you were at 85%. This looks like a huge drop from Masters 1, since you thought you were at the very bottom of Masters 1. That's because you didn't realize you had already lost 15% of the rank into Masters 2. For our visual learners, a scale might help. One of these show your displayed rank and one showing your actual rank. Again, as you cross the rank border, you get stopped at the end. If you then lose, you end up deeper into the rank than expected. If you then go on to win your next game, you won't quite be back up to the next rank. Making you think, I just got put into Masters 2, but I need two wins to get back into Masters 1. Which is true because your displayed rank stayed in Masters 1 a game longer than it should have. Leading you to believe that you aren't really ranking up as quickly as you are deranking. Flats may not understand the new system because he isn't looking at all the data, since he skips past the rank up and down screen as fast as possible most of the time. So again, I just wanted to clarify this because it's something that he mentions a lot in stream. I don't want people getting the wrong idea about their new ranking system being broken, because overall, it's a vast improvement <laughs> over what we did have. In the end, I just think you shouldn't really go to streamers expecting them to give you the secret info on how to climb, because they'll often answer based on anecdotal evidence rather than actual data. This evidence is also skewed by selective memory as they're not the best at recalling what methods most often led them to success for various reasons that we went over. I personally do think stacking can be useful for climbing in general, but again, do your own research as the results Flats is getting may be very different for you. And the results he says he's getting aren't true because he's not actually tracking his own data. You may climb better solo if you have friends that aren't improving as quickly as you, however, it could actually be holding you back. So I would suggest making a spreadsheet, track your own games, write down how many people you're playing with, who you're playing with, and find some trends for yourself so you don't have to rely on your selective memory like everybody else. You can also even track things like, you know, which maps you're playing on, what heroes you played, just to get a better idea of what you can do to climb and where you have areas that you need improving. Also, you need to have the right mindset to climb. Work on improving your own play and stop spending time putting the blame on others. Other players can be the reason you lost a singular specific game, but they are not the reason that you aren't climbing overall. I always say that assuming you aren't a thrower, your team has four players that could be trash or they could be throwing, another team has five. So if you're truly a better player and are improving, then in time you will climb even with bad teammates because the other team is more likely than you are to have <laughs> those trash or throwing teammates. 
Also remember, winning more games doesn't make you a better player, but being a better player helps you win more games. So just because you go on a 10 game lose streak doesn't mean you're a worse player than you were yesterday. Rank will come and go, focus on what you can control. My last takeaway is just learn how the new ranking system works. At the very least, don't complain about it if you don't understand it. I hope you all found something to take away from this, or at the very least, found the statistics interesting like I did. If you made it this far, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, comment on what I should collect data on next. I mainly play Overwatch and Sea of Thieves, but I'm open to other ideas if they seem interesting enough for me. As for my Sea of Thieves viewers, uh, if you made it this far, I'm very surprised. <laughs> but uh, a video on Hourglass is in the works. Uh, I've been working on it for a while. Um, I've just been more focused on Overwatch lately with the new season dropping. So I'm sure I'll get bored of it eventually and head back to Sea of Thieves. 